Well, Merry Christmas. We uh, made it to Christmas Eve 2023. Uh, I know maybe some of you thought we'd never get here, but we did. I'm sure a lot of you kids out there are still counting down till tomorrow and the excitement that will come. Did you hear about the young boy from a poor family who wanted a bike for Christmas? So he asked his mother, he said, Mom, I want a bike for Christmas. And his mother said, Son, we can't afford one. You'll just have to ask Jesus. So the boy went to his room and he got out a paper and a pen and he thought he would write a prayer to Jesus. So he wrote, first of all, Dear Jesus, I've been good all year. Can you please give me a bike for Christmas? Well, then he thought about it and he said, Well, maybe that's not entirely true. So he tore that up and thought he'd try again. Dear Jesus, I've been good for the past week. Can you please give me a bike for Christmas? And then he knew that that wasn't true either. So he tried yet one more time. He said, dear Jesus, if you give me a bike, I'll be good all next year. But that seemed a little too impossible. So he tore that up and frustrated, he walks out of his room. He walks outside and decides to take a little walk. So as he's walking down, he walks by a neighbor's yard and he sees a statue of the Virgin Mother Mary on his neighbor's lawn, the mother of Jesus. So the boy hops over the fence, picks up the statue, places it over his shoulder, looks both ways, and he runs home and he hides it. Then he sits down and he writes this final letter. He says, Dear Jesus, if you ever want to see your mother again, you need to give me a bike. <laughs> well, I, I'm sure maybe all of us have been there one time or another. The past four Sundays, we have been in a series called Rediscover Christmas. I think sometimes there are things that we need to rediscover, how significant, important, and life-changing they are. And, and each week, we looked at the very things that we talked about with our Advent candle, you know, the amazing gifts that Jesus Christ brought to us starting with that very first Christmas. And so this evening, I want to talk very briefly about these four gifts that Jesus would like to give you, and maybe some of you need to rediscover these gifts. First of all, Jesus gives the gift of hope. You know, hope is the fuel of Christian faith. Hope is like air to your lungs. Hope is like breath that keeps you alive. Hope is a, like a lifeline that makes life worth living. And, and if you don't have hope, there, there's probably no worse way to live than to live without hope. So I'd like to ask you, how is the flame of hope in your heart and life today? You know, for some of us, for some of you, this has been a tough year. Some of you, it's been a tough year financially. For some of you, you have struggled emotionally. Some of you struggle with your health. You've struggled physically. Some of you have maybe endured in terrible pain by struggling relationally. Maybe you've lost someone, or maybe you're in the process of a relationship not working out. And maybe the flame of hope for some of you has been burning very, very low, <laughs> flickering, and maybe for some of you it's even seemed like it's gone out. You know, it's a miserable thing. It's absolutely miserable to have little or no hope. Did you know that's why Jesus came? <laughs> Jesus came to give you hope. And, and let me encourage you that no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you will go through, no matter what you've done, no matter what you haven't done, Jesus will give you hope. The hope to have a fresh new beginning and the hope to carry on no matter what's going on in your life. The Bible talks about this over and over. Let me, let me share with you one beautiful passage in the book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 13. It says, may the God of Hope. What kind of God do we serve? 
He's a God of hope. And he says, may he fill you with all joy and peace that comes from doing one simple, profound thing, and that is trusting, trusting in him. And when you do that, so that you may overflow with what? With hope by the power of the Holy Spirit that comes to live inside of you. Jesus can do the miraculous thing of restoring hope when it seems like there is no hope. And so I want to encourage you that if you're struggling in the hope department and uh, you need to rediscover a little (laughs) hope in your life, could I encourage you to let Christ work in your life and let him relight that flame. Get it? Well, that was sad. Get it? Better. There's another gift that he gives you that he offers you this Christmas. Jesus not only wants to give you the gift of hope, he wants to give you the gift of peace. Matter of fact, one of the names that Jesus is often referred to by is that Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Do you know what the the Hebrew word that even Jewish people today greet each other with or or, or when they walk away from each other, this word they use to greet each other and and to basically say goodbye with? Do you know what that Hebrew word is? Shalom. The amazing thing about that word, that Hebrew word, it's a rich, beautiful word that doesn't mean just peace. But what it means is when you have the peace that God gives, it also means when you have his peace, you have health, you have comfort, you have completeness, you have safety, you have security. And that's the reason they use that word. And it's such a powerful word in the Hebrew language. Shalom. Well, that's what Jesus is. He is the Prince of Shalom, the Prince of Peace. There's a peace that he can give you that no matter what kind of storm you may find yourself being tossed back and forth in, he gives you this calm assurance that it's going to be all right. I love an old hymn that the main refrain and the title of the song says, it is well with my soul. The man that wrote that was actually a missionary. He and his wife and family felt called of God to go to Israel. And they were on board a ship and they were headed to do this mission work and they got caught up in one of the most terrible storms they thought they were going to die. And that's when he sat down and wrote that song. And he wrote those words again and again. It is well with my soul, regardless of how the billows may toss. It is well with my soul. And that's the kind of peace that Jesus Christ gives. Philippians chapter 4 verse 7 puts it this way. And the peace of God, which transcends all human understanding... When you receive it, it will guard your heart and it will guard your mind in Christ Jesus. And my prayer is that if you don't have peace, the peace of Christ in your heart and life and relationships in every area of your life, my prayer is that you, you might have it and you might begin to rediscover that before you leave tonight Because when the storms come blowing into your life and when the winds, even if they're howling right now, you need to just say, God, I need your peace. And he'll give it to you. One of the unpleasant things that I've had this past year is standing by the bedside of several of our church members as they were passing away. You know, it's a a painful thing. Uh, to literally stand there knowing that someone is about to pass. Um, But yet, it's an amazing thing to stand beside the bedside of a believer, a Christian, and to hear them talk about, here they are, they're dying, they know they're dying, and they talk about, Pastor, I'm ready, I've got peace. And they'll look at their family, it's going to be all right. And they express more concern for their family 
who's fixing to lose them than they do for themselves knowing that they're fixing to lose this thing we call life. But they had this peace, this peace that passes understanding. And friends, you don't know what, you're, what I'm talking about unless you're a Christian. Because he gives you that kind of peace. It's a gift. It's a free gift that comes from a relationship with him. He not only gives you hope, he not only gives you peace, but he also wants to give you the gift of joy. You know, my question is, how is your joy quotient? Um, if I were to talk to your family, <laughs> what would they say about your joy quotient? You know, are you an old grump, um, a grinch? Or do you know what it is to really experience joy? That doesn't mean that you're happy all the time. You know, there's a big difference between happiness and joy. You're never going to be happy all the time. But I'll tell you, you can, be jo you can have joy all the time. You know, when bad things are happening in your life, it, I don't expect you to be happy about that. But what's amazing is that when you rediscover joy and what it means to be in Jesus Christ, that no matter what's going on in your life, you know he's in control. You know he's on his throne. You know he loves you. He cares about you. And that is a joy that money can't buy. But it's a gift that he's willing to offer you for free. Listen to this prayer that was written by the Apostle Peter. He says, though you have not seen him literally with your eyes, you know he's real and you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe. You believe in him. And because of that, you are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith and the salvation of your souls. <laughs> and I don't know where you are. I don't know what you've been through. I don't know what you might be going through right now. But I can assure you, Jesus knows. And he not only knows, he cares and my prayer is that every person here, if you haven't discovered, that you will discover or you will rediscover the joy that surpasses human understanding, the free gift that Jesus offers to any and all of us that comes in a growing, authentic relationship with him. Get it? Good. Then there's one more gift that Jesus wants to give you. It's free too. And it's the gift of love, unconditional love. You know, every human being wants to be loved. We, we want to be accepted. There's, it, it, it's a dominant desire and a dominant theme in our culture. I can guarantee you that thousands of years from now, when the archaeologists and the anthropologists are exploring the artifacts of our era thousands of years from now, I know they're going to conclude that one of the most important issues in our culture was our obsession with love. You know, we have songs about it. We have movies about it. We watch TV programs and TV series about it. We read books they're all filled with this theme of love. People long for it. They want to celebrate it. They mourn when they lose it. But I know this last year has been a challenging year, has it not? Instead of living in a culture that exemplifies love, it's like we have become so divided. It's like so many people today are filled with anger and division and conflict and hatred and judgmentalism. But you know, that's just a reflection of our old sinful, broken nature that always divides us. And that always happens when you don't know the Lord. You know, Jesus, on the other hand, is love himself. He's the bridge of love that unites us together. You know, it's just like the body of Christ in our church here. We, we don't always agree with each other, but it's amazing how we can still love each other. There's something about the gift of God's unconditional love, when we receive it, it helps us to bridge that love gap with others. 
That's why my prayer is that you will discover or that you will rediscover the gift of love that was given to you in Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus offers us a perfect love that allows us to experience complete acceptance by God and a perfect love that removes our guilt and our fears, gives us peace, gives us hope, and gives us joy. Listen to this prayer that Paul prayed, and maybe you might pray it right now yourself. Paul prayed these words, and he wrote them down. He says, I pray that all of you, being rooted and established in the unconditional love of Jesus Christ, I pray that you might have power, together with all of the Lord's holy people, to begin to understand, to comprehend, to grasp how wide, how long, how high, how deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. When we started our service tonight, I brought my beautiful bride out. We've been married uh, for the last 50 plus years, 52 as a matter of fact. And I know you're shocked. You probably thought I wasn't over 30. I understand. <laughs> I thought I loved my wife, and I did when I first met her and asked her to marry me. Um, I knew that I, I felt something for her that I had never felt for any other human being. And I thought I loved her then. But as I look back now after 50 plus years of unconditional love and acceptance that she's had for me, her patience, her commitment, and what I feel for her today, it doesn't even compare. I didn't know what love was at all. I am so blessed with the amazing love that she has for me and that I hope she feels for me. But, you know, we've discovered that love because we've lived with each other and gone through a lot for the last 50-plus years. And that's like a relationship with Jesus Christ. The more you walk with him, the more you spend time with him, the more you read his word, the more you pray, the more you talk to him, the more you serve him, the more you'll discover how much he loves you. And, it, and that love just seemed to get bigger and deeper and deeper. This, it's higher than you realize. It's deeper than you realize. It's longer. It's wider than you could ever imagine. And my prayer is that if you haven't begun to discover that before you leave tonight, you begin that journey of beginning a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and discovering that unconditional love that he has for you. Now, I know, again, this past year, for many people, it's been a struggle. Last couple of years have been a challenge, have they not? I've heard a lot of people ask themselves, where, where is God? Where's Jesus? Let me offer you this suggestion. <laughs> Wherever you are, Jesus is there. In the middle of your uncertainties and your struggles, Jesus is there. In the middle of your disappointments and discouragement, I promise you, Jesus and his love is there. In the middle of your sadness and pain, Jesus is there. In the middle of your, cry, your crying and your tears and confusion, Jesus is there. In the middle of your fears and your failures, Jesus is there. In the middle of your losses and even your victories, Jesus is there. In the middle of your brokenness and your backsliding, Jesus is there. In your sickness and suffering, Jesus is there. In your life and ultimately in your death, Jesus is there. And he's Wherever you are, he is there, and the beautiful thing, he's here right now, tonight. He's working, and he's moving, and he offers you the gift of unconditional love and forgiveness. I'm not going to heaven because I'm a pastor. I'm not going to heaven because I've been faithful to my wife. I'm not going to heaven because I try to do more good stuff than bad stuff. I'm going to heaven not because I preach and I try to serve the community. I'm going to heaven not because of any good work that I've done or ever will do. I'm going to heaven because of the good work Jesus has done in me. 
He died on the cross, and I just said, Lord, I want to receive your gift. And he has forgiven me, and he has saved me, and I'm going to heaven because of Jesus. And I've trusted him, and I've committed my life to him. I'm not married to my wife because I loved her, and I wanted to spend the rest of my life with her. I'm married to my wife because I said I do one day. I made a commitment to her. That's how you become a Christian. That's how you receive these gifts. That's how you receive Jesus. You say, I do, Lord. I want you in my life. Many of you have done that. Some of you may need to renew that commitment. Some of you have never done that. You've thought about it. You, you, you've thought about it a lot of times. You know you should do it. But why not do it tonight? Don't put it off any longer. It's like a present. Here it is, but it's not yours till you receive it and unwrap it and say yes. Could I pray for you tonight? I want to pray that God would help all of you to rediscover Christmas and Jesus and his love and all these gifts. But I also want to pray for some of you that may have never received that gift. And I'd like to even maybe help you pray a prayer. Can we pray together? Heavenly Father, thank you for your unconditional love that you demonstrated for us when you left heaven and came to earth knowing that you would re be rejected and that you would have to die on a cross one day. But God, when you died on that cross, you died for all of our sins so that we could be forgiven, so that we could receive your gift of forgiveness, your gift of love and hope and peace and joy. And Lord, we want to receive that. Thank you for that. Lord, some of us have already done that. And Lord, we just want to renew that commitment now. We invite you to come into our life and help us to rediscover your love. And Lord, there may be someone here tonight, they've known that, but they've never actually done it. So Lord, I pray tonight you would help them to pray this prayer and mean it in their heart. Put it in their own words. Could you pray something like this? Lord Jesus, thank you for leaving heaven, coming to earth, then ultimately going to a cross because of your unconditional love, I can be saved and forgiven. Lord, I don't understand all of that, but I believe it's true. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose from the grave, and I invite you into my life tonight to be my personal Lord and Savior. I want to receive your love, your hope, your joy, your peace, and by receiving you into my life. And so, Lord, as best I know how, I commit my heart and my life to you today. Thank you, Lord, for hearing my prayer. Thank you for forgiving my sin. Amen. Amen.